Good morning, I'm Phil and you're here to code. Today we'll be going over MATLAB basics to advanced plotting. Everything you see here will go through from importing data from Excel to plotting multiple graphs on one line, doing different subplots, different figures, changing the symbols from diamonds to triangles to squares, colors, thickness of lines, axes, labels, legends. We're going over it all. If this is your first time plotting in MATLAB, you're in the right place. If this is your first time ever using MATLAB, go to my other videos that are on basics and fundamentals. You'll need some of that knowledge to come here. And if you've plotted before and you're looking for more advanced functions, jump maybe halfway into this video or more, or go to the second video to learn some more complex functions. Let's get started. We're coming in with very simple data. Here it's just some raw data of the day and number of fractures, let's say, in a bridge. X1 is our X data we're going to plot on the X axis, and Y1 is our Y data. I've used the linspace command here to get us 11 values between 0 and 10. So we're working with 11 data points in the X and 11 data points in the Y. To start every subsection that I like to do, and you denote a subsection with this double percent sign, and I also run the sections as I go, or you can use control enter to do this as I do. Close all will close any figures you've created. Always do this when you're running a new script because the old figures mess up your new figures. Close all gets rid of them all. CLC just clears your command window. And I'm using this clear vars except YXL and XXL because we're going to bring in some new stuff. But for right now, let's just keep this as clear all. And we note that this is going to clear every variable we create in our workspace. And our workspace variables appear over here. Let's just start by running this. We've got the basic plot x1, y1 command, which throws together our first plotting object in figure one. All right, it's pretty crappy. Let's get some nice aesthetics on here. But first, we got to make sure we're going to show how to import data from Excel. All right, to import data from Excel, you're going to use the xls read command, all right? And then feed it the file extension with single apostrophe, okay? That brings in the Excel data. Now this takes a little bit of time, which is why we're doing it in a separate subsection. I'll show you just how long it takes here. After I get that data in, I'm gonna do a transpose, okay? The data that I'm bringing in here, we've got day and fractures, and we're vertical. This is how tidy data looks but it's not the best maybe to plot with MATLAB. Sorry, to plot with MATLAB. Now that we've got our data, here's what it looks like after MATLAB has read it. We're in vertical arrays, okay? We want these to be horizontal arrays. I mean, you could, you could do both, but I prefer using horizontal arrays for plotting. Hence why I've included the little apostrophe here. This transposes the data, and now it's gonna be horizontal. I'll show you guys for clarity. Boom. And I just want this first row to be my new X's, the second row to be my new Y's. Thus, I've defined my X Excel and my Y Excel to be the first row and the second row. And the single, just normal colon gives you all the data points in that area. So great. After running these two together, this will give us all of our Excel data. And you'll see in the top right, we'll end up with an Excel data, an X Excel, and a Y Excel right there. And these are 1 by 11 doubles that we're going to use to plot. We only want to run that function once because it gets really lengthy to run it. That's why instead of clearing all the variables, let's just clear vars except X Excel and Y Excel. And then when we run, we keep our Y Excel and X Excel, and we're good to go from here. Awesome. Now. The first thing we want to do when we're plotting is to get more control over what the data looks like. To do this, we can begin to specify what color. That's going to be blue. You could do magenta. You could do red. And you can also specify what type of data symbols you're using. For data points, it's tradition and good form to use symbols. Okay, So this will give us red diamonds. Very nice. When you're using trend lines, you're going to use different dashed lines, maybe a dashed dot line, and we'll get to that as we go after we plot trend lines. All this information is ideally and helpfully stored 
in the help plot command. This help command you can use for any MATLAB command and it gives you data about that command. So plot is the command we're looking at. Help plot gives us all the information we need. Highly recommend you read through this. We're gonna jump here. These are the colors we're doing, BGRCMYKW. And then you can either choose to do it with a symbol or with a type of line. And you're gonna put these together in a text string. So I could do OG, which gives us circles that are green, a little bit hard to see. So we're not gonna do that. But if I did OM, for example, I should get magenta circles. Cool, but those are hollow. Let's add another command called marker face color and call that magenta as well. I'm gonna end my parenthesis, my apostrophe. And now we've got solid filled in lines. So our data is starting to look a bit better, but we need a title, we need some labels. So let's add some plot features. And these are really straightforward. Title, and you just input a text string here, whatever the title should be. And those apostrophes are what are denoting it as a text string. Same thing with X label, same thing with Y label. And now we've got some things that are starting to look like a real plot. Let's add in some X limit commands and some Y limit commands. These will give us more control over what our max and min X and Y values are that we're plotting. So here you're just gonna open up your argument and your argument is gonna be a matrix with your X limit or X minimum and your Y max, and sorry, X min, X max, and then you've got your Y min and your Y max. Make sure you're doing parentheses and then within that you're doing brackets. Okay, those brackets define the actual argument to go into the X limit function. And I like to throw the grid on, sorry, voice crack. I like to throw the grid on because that night makes a nice grid here and we can begin to see our data much better. Super. Now, if you wanna add text to your graph, very straightforward, text command, boom. Where do you wanna put it? This should be your X coordinate. Let's say we wanna put it at 10, Y coordinate at five, and you can call it or the text string afterwards, and that's what actually goes on your graph. Okay, we're a little bit far over. Maybe we can adjust that to be maybe more at six. Maybe six, five would be a nice location. And you can do that. The other command you can use to add text is the G text. Rather than specifying a coordinate, you'll click where you want the text to go. So here's our fracture point that we moved over to do this. Now we've got, ooh, the G text. Okay, we've got a command now. We have to click and we can add the text where we click and see it appears just right where the mouse point is. Super. Now, this isn't very useful until we've got multiple things on a graph. So let's add a trend line for this graph that shows an approximate approximation. So to do this, let's go back up to the plot data. Keep all your data that you're plotting in the same place because you have to do multiple, get all your stuff plotted, and then you can add all these nice extra features, okay? To add another plot command, use the hold on, and then you can plot whatever you're plotting. But I need to define my trend line. Let's call this y2, and that's gonna equal the x1 values, and it's actually an x1 squared function, if you guys notice that, x1 squared. Great, so we got an y2. Let's do plot x1, y2, and see what we've got. All right, it's starting to look much nicer, but we're gonna need a legend in here. I've still got the G text going. I'm gonna get rid of that just cause it's a bit annoying. So let's just comment that out. And let's make this the same color. Make it a dashed line. Okay, now we're starting to look somewhat reasonable here. The fracture point's a bit off, but that's fine. To keep a legend going, you use legend and you're gonna put what it is that you're labeling. Now these follow the same order that you plotted in. So first we plotted raw data, and second we plotted raw data trend line. All right, that's gonna jump in. The default is in the top right. You can come here and you can actually just click and drag and put that where you want. And then to copy this figure, you can do edit, copy figure, and jump into a Microsoft Word document or wherever and just paste the figure there. I like to have this as a default in a better location. We're out of time for this first video. Jump to the next to learn more.